good and four one one foot show and I'm live at, on location as you can see I'm not in the library um, at I G F field now and I have an interview with Rob Gale which you guys will see right away so um, you're from England so how how was that experience be playing soccer from England? Uh, it very it very much like playing hockey in Canada that it's the sport that most people know and grow up with uh, the sport that most people play on the streets with your friends if you pick up game uh, so in England it's the front page news the back page news it's kind of like hockey and football combined in the USA everybody wants to be yeah. what we call football but yeah. you guys call soccer how did you get so good at being soccer was there somebody that taught you uh, uh, lots of uh, lots of experiences. I've got three older sisters and an older brother that all played soccer. So being the youngest of five, I had to compete against yeah. them when I was young. Were they rough? Uh, not too bad. My eldest sister's the toughest of the lot, yeah. being the eldest one. She was an uncompromising centre back. But uh, yeah, growing up, and my dad's a coach, my brother-in-law's a coach, a soccer family. Yeah. And then, uh, like I said, everybody in England wants to be a soccer player. So you just play it at school, playground any chance you get. How's that coming from a soccer family and then coming here and realizing that you're coaching here a professional soccer team? It's taken a long time. I first came over in the summer of 2000 to Winnipeg and I must confess I didn't know where it was on the map <laughs> um, but I was lucky to come here uh, and start getting involved in soccer yeah. camps and soccer programs and I never thought then that we'd ever have a professional yeah. soccer team you know it's something they told me there used to be a team back in the day in 1992 the Winnipeg Fury. The Winnipeg Troy West would play on that team. I think he was part of the squad, yeah, yeah for sure. But he yeah. found out he was better at kicking the balls yeah. over the crossbar. Over he the crossbar. So he, uh, he still obviously is, is a big supporter on TSN and with the radio and everything. Yeah. But Winnipeg and Manitoba especially have come a long way in their soccer with the districts, the clubs, the number of players. And now having this opportunity to coach a team in my hometown is a dream come true. And I heard you were a big part and like this was your dream eventually to have a soccer team in Winnipeg. Yeah I've been working many years in uh, technical director and then I worked with the national teams before yeah. I uh, wanted to bring a team here and work with the Bombers to, to try and bring it all. So. Was it uh, like how long uh, had you been working on bringing a team We've been discussing it almost two years. Oh two yeah, years. So. Okay. A long time in terms of building it and finding a name and the colours yeah. and all this, the yeah. supporters and the players and yeah. scouting, so there's lots of good stuff there. How many players are from Winnipeg? We actually have eight out of our 22, okay. so we're over a third of the playing squad okay. that are uh, originally from Winnipeg and grew up here and played in okay. the soccer clubs and cool. the community, so that's really cool. good. Um, how did that all work, finding your players? Like, did you say scouts out like to Scotland and England everywhere to find them? Yeah very much so. Uh, it, it's a it's such a big world but in terms of soccer it's such a small world you know and it's the global game there's so many players but you over the years I've developed contracts a lot of these players I was lucky enough to coach with the national team for Team Canada and so I knew they were very good players and luckily they wanted to come back and work with me again and then we tried to find find complementary pieces. It's like putting a jigsaw yeah. puzzle together. Yeah. How was coaching the national team and that experience? It is the greatest thing you, you can do, I've got to say that, because when you hear that national anthem and you're standing up and you're representing your country, then there really is no greater honour. I've got to say this rivals it though, when it's your hometown as well and people in your community, your family and friends. So for the same reasons, two totally unique, but absolutely the best feeling in the world. Um, how, um, how do you like this facility? Is it as uh, good as you thought it would be? Is it as big as, uh, big as England? Or how would you 
compared to like England. Yeah, you know what? It's it, it's such an amazing facility, and the players, opposition, when they come here, they they stand and marvel at how nice it is, and it's so good for the the supporters, the fans. It gives us a chance to to grow as a club and hopefully fill more seats as we go. Yeah. And yeah, it it would stand up with some of the best soccer facilities in the world. It really is that good. What's the biggest soccer facility that you played in? Ooh, that's a good question. I would say uh, I remember playing in a couple of stadiums back in England at Walsall. Um, yeah, I've played in a few big ones. This is I played in a couple of real big ones in the States as well, where they were football stadiums down in Kansas City as well. Uh, and visited and coached in many, many beautiful professional stadiums worldwide. So, but this is just as good. Yeah. How's the atmosphere on a game day? Describe it as a coach. It is really unique. I've got to say, it feels like an authentic football, as I would say, yeah. or soccer experience yeah. because fans come, they bang drums, they sing yeah. songs, they jump up and down and yeah. they wave flags and it really feels like a, a, a soccer crowd and different to other when games. They go it's and great. The, the noise is great and yeah. it feels great when we score. Yeah. It feels terrible when the other team scores because yeah. I feel that personally. How is it um, just starting out the year, you had a few rough patches. How do you think you'll get over that? You know, it's very important when you're building something new to focus on the performance and not always the results. Because in our first home game, we played very, very well. Yeah. Dominated against Edmonton, created more chances. One nothing, right? We went two one in the end. Two we just one. won the last game, one nothing. That's yeah. probably the one you're thinking about. Yeah. But um, we probably deserved a bit more. But as a coach, you can only say how good yeah. did we play. Yeah. And sometimes the result goes your way. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, how is it controlling five captains? Because that's rare <laughs> as a professional, like as a professional team. So yeah, how so, is that? Well, what we actually have is a leadership group, we call it. Okay. So you can only have the one captain on a day who wears the armbands, but what we say in a squad and in a team, you need captains all over the field because you want them in the defense, in your midfield, in your forward line, so that they're leading the line and working, helping create a culture yeah. that we want. So we have about five players in our leadership group and then we named Jordan and who yeah. you just met yeah. and Big Skyler the real tall yeah. player oh yeah they're our he two club tall, captains by the way he is tall six three that's four that's right six four sorry um so, so we all look up to him figuratively yeah. and literally yeah. had you ever seen like a CFL game before I have come to some bomber games over the years yeah. I can't say I know all the rules um, well, no, but, but it's like I, me I enjoyed and doing the first down, yeah. and uh, I've been known to visit the rum hut on occasion as well. That's a very popular <laughs> spot. Uh, what was it like running soccer camps down in the U.S.? Very good. You know what? Uh, in the U.S. and and the people, they're so friendly, uh, and when you're an outsider, they really treat you super well everywhere you go, uh, which is really nice. And you come in and you try and leave something for the community or help the kids, and they're very Where responsive did you to that. Go? I've been all over the states, from uh, Seattle or Washington State, all the way across to New Hampshire, all across Holy. the Midwest. So Holy. I've done a I've done a lot of travel. Is this State soccer community comparable to this one in Canada? Very similar. I'd say it's a, a kind of a middle class sport. Uh, lots of well to do families and good young kids. And they have obviously a lot more people in America. Yeah. So that's the biggest yeah. difference and the advantage they've got over us. But also sometimes like a city like ours where everybody's close yeah. together, close. that can be an advantage yeah. too. So. I do... Um, do some opposing teams come out and go, I wish I would have played here rather than where they play? Absolutely. And there's some cool, unique stadiums that are being built. Yeah. But when you come here, it really feels, yeah. like you said earlier, like a European yeah. soccer type stadium. It looks like it was built for soccer. 
We like to think it was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do too. Plus football as well. <laughs> it sneaks his football in there. That's okay. Always, always. <laughs> um, what do your daughters play soccer? Both of my daughters play soccer, yes. I've got 14-year-old and 11-year-old daughters, and one is purely soccer, one is a soccer player and a dancer. Oh, dancer. I, what did she dance? She does hip-hop oh, hip -hop. and tap. I'd like to say uh, I taught her uh, all the dance moves, but I'm a terrible dancer. You I'm like your dad dance. dancing at a wedding. No, I'm shocking, yeah. No. Like, mo like most white people dance. That is true. I've yeah. got the rhythm of a white guy. Yeah. <laughs> um, how, how is it, like you've been away before, how is it in other stadiums? Like, you, do you get booed like you do at a football game? Yeah, they're not always the friendliest, the away fans, which is okay, you yeah. come to expect it, but in professional sports, it's okay. That means they respect you and they're, they're, yeah. they're worried about you. If they're not shouting at you, yeah. then that means they're not worried about you or your team. Uh, what's the... Have you ever got stuff thrown at you as a player before? <laughs> Mainly just insults. Um, Mainly insults. I've been down in a few places in uh, South America, or uh, Central America with the national team and there's some pints of lager or we hope it's lager. Sometimes it's recycled lager and glasses being thrown at you. But, oh, uh, cool. <laughs> yeah, not too bad. The stadium not security is very good these days. Yeah. Well, it has to be with all the uh, crazy th things in the world going on. Yes, it does. Um, what do you do other than soccer? Not a lot. I'm, I've got no other uses in life, I don't think. Uh, <laughs> I just try and uh, yeah. I watch a lot of soccer. I go to my, I do. I try and be involved in my kids' life as much as I can be. I like to cook, and if we like to go to the movies and the theatre, that kind of stuff. So if I get any social time, it's usually spent what with my kids. What do you like to cook? I love what? my favourite dish is an English roast dinner okay. with Yorkshire puddings, roast beef, potatoes, vegetables, cauliflower, cheese sauce, okay. the whole shebang. Okay. Okay. Uh, what, will you ever go back to England? You never say never. I love Canadian living. To visit? Yeah, I love going back to visit all my yeah. family. Like I said, I've got a big family, lots of nieces and nephews. How big is your family? So I'm the, I'm, I'm the youngest in seven, and oh. they've all got kids. Uh, my mum has about seven, 16 great-grandchildren grandchildren, and quite a few great-grandchildren now. So. so family gathering must be, like, huge. Crazy. It's like uh, we're almost as big as a football squad. Yeah. Um, and who does all the cooking? Uh, I like to take care of lots of the cooking. Uh, we help out. My sister's also a very okay. good cook. My middle sister and my mum. So we try and share the load as much as we can. Will they ever come down to see a game? Yeah, my dad actually flew in and surprised me for the first game. And and my, cool. my sister's coming in the summer, my mum's coming, my nieces cool. are coming in the cool. summer, and they're all big soccer fans, so cool. they love to come. They love Winnipeg in yeah. the summer. Yeah, <laughs> they the, never winter come in the winter isn't that good. No, they don't like no. it so much in the winter. Uh, does England get snow or where you're from? Not very much. Not very if, you much. know what happens if it snows? Everyone goes out and tries to build a snowman and go sledding, and it's a puddle within a few minutes, so. No, it's no. Uh, so what was that reaction like when you moved here in 2000? I don't think I left the house between December and April. <laughs> I waved goodbye to my neighbours somewhere in around the fall and waved hello again in spring. Yeah. I was a bit of a softie, I didn't go out yeah. too much. But now you're probably... Oh, I'm out it. there, I'm skinny yeah. dipping in the lakes in the winter, ice skating, Ooh, all the that. winter sports. You <laughs> ice skate? No, I'm, sure. I'm like uh, Bambi on ice, I'm terrible. Oh, ice, yeah. uh, what, had you ever been to like, um, outside Winnipeg before? Like, Winnipeg Beach or anywhere like that? Yeah, I'm very lucky that when I was technical director for Manitoba, I travelled all over Manitoba, so I've been to Thompson, the Par, oh. Flin Flon, Barons River, Morden, Winkler, Steinbeck, Stonewall, yeah. I've been to Westman, Brandon, you name oh, it, Shiloh, Nipawa, Minnedosa, I've visited yeah. everywhere. Um, what, what was your favourite city to be in? 
Well, out of, those. out of all of those, you know what I like? I've got to say, the people have been so nice everywhere. When I go to Brandon or to Dothan, everyone's so nice to me. Uh, I love Winnipeg because I live here, but I've got to say, I really enjoy going out to the rural areas too. Okay. Oh, it was nice to meet you, Rob. Jordan, it was my pleasure. That's and the best I, interview I've had all year. Well done. Yeah, Excellent. it Thank probably you very much. was. Yeah, it definitely uh, was. No problem. Definitely probably. was. Good man. Um, and I hope to see you at a couple games later on this year. We would love to host yeah. you anytime you want. Thank you very much for coming out and interviewing me. Thank you. Good man. I'm here with uh, the youngest player in the league. Um, Tyler D Tardo, yep. uh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, and your siblings went to all schools and you're from Riverie. Can yep. you explain where they all went? Yeah, my brother started off uh, at MBCI and he went there through all his years. My sister also started there, but she switched up to Miles Mac and then I had actually went to Riverie, so I didn't go to either of those ones. So we're rivals then. I think so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, what's it like being the youngest player in the league? Uh, it's incredible, you know, it's a feeling I never thought I even imagined of having, but it's something I'm holding close to my heart and I'm continuing to push to work in this league. Who's been your mentor as a, when you came here? Who took you under your wing? Uh, I think a lot of the guys, you know, a they know I'm the youngest, the so they've been treating me really yeah. good and they've all been kind of helping me out. What was your parents' reaction when they, when you told them? <laughs> oh, they were super excited. They yeah. all they gave me big hugs and they congratulated yeah. me, and they're just happy for me. Um, where did you play soccer before this? Uh, I spent some time obviously here in local clubs, but I also went overseas and I went to Italy for a little bit. Had some places in England that I went to. Oh, how was Italy? Unbelievable. My favorite place I've been so, been to so far. Good food there, eh? The best. Yeah. And Italian, what's your favorite uh, dish from there? Oh, pizza. Pizza? No doubt. Pizza. Ah, I don't like pizza. So. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I'm Italian, so that hurts a little bit. Yeah, that, but pasta though. <laughs> yes, we pasta. We can is, agree on that. Yeah, pasta is incredible. Um, uh, what's it like playing on the field being a local kid, like, is it, it a reality for you? Did you uh, like, what's it like taking the field? Uh, it's unbelievable, you know, yeah. the fans and everything, and it's even more crazy because I never thought I'd be able to play professional soccer here in my hometown, but when I get to do that in front of people I know, it's amazing. Um, how was, like, your reception, like, your friends, what did they say? They're very supportive. Because you have yeah. obviously school friends, right? Yeah, yeah. So how does that all work with school then? Yeah, it's it's difficult. Uh, my friends are, I'm still trying to talk to them, still trying to get to hang out with them as much as I can. They're very supportive. Yeah. And I'm going to have to do some schoolwork outside of this, obviously, some online and some okay. just at home. <laughs> That's pretty cool that they're so accommodating. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, what's it like? Uh, have you scored a goal yet? Unfortunately, I haven't. I'm still uh, working on that. You, you, I can't wait to see you do that, accomplish that. Thank you, me too. Um, what's it like wearing that jacket? Uh, I try to wear it as much as I can because just when it's on, it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Um, had your family come and see you yet? Yep, they've watched me yeah. play. Every every game or no? Uh, yeah, they traveled out to our first one in Pacific and they watched uh, both home games now. How many players are on the team? Uh, I believe 22. Oh, plenty too. The team. Yeah. yeah. So you were one of 22. Yeah. How long ago did you know you would be on this team? Uh, I was kind of talking to them throughout January and that's when my deal was official. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, uh, what's Rob like as a coach? Oh, he's, he's the yeah. best, obviously. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's always teaching me new things and pushing yeah. me to work as hard as I can. Because that's important as an athlete. Yeah. Do you get paid to be a professional soccer player? I do. How do you manage that as a high school student? 
it's difficult because I'm trying to work here as this is my job and I'm trying to, you know, work as I as hard as I can and focus on this, but I got to also focus on school, so it's it's, you know, it's I got to focus as much as I do there as I do here. Is there any university plans after you graduate? Uh, not yet. I'm still looking. Obviously, my coach, actually, Damien Rock, just mentioned that I should go check out some classes for next year, so I think I'll plan on doing that. Well, nice to meet you, nice and to I meet wish you. you all the best in your young career. Thank you. So, uh, thank you. Please like and subscribe to Jordan's YouTube channel and follow him on Twitter.